Hey everybody, welcome to another short episode of Hometown History. I'm Jamie. And I'm Donnie. And this episode, we are going to quickly talk about all of the buildings that have come down in New York County, specifically through the 1950s and 1970s. So during this time, there's a growing automobile industry. A lot more people are wanting to drive around. They're moving into the suburbs, and so they need their cars to go from their homes to their place of work or even to the downtown to shop. And so because of this, York needed more parking spaces. Yes. So buildings were in danger. Nothing was safe. Things were coming down left and right. And again, I understand that this needed to happen because I need places to park. Absolutely. But all these beautiful places, though, were at risk. So Dami and I are going to cover some of the buildings that came down, starting with the city market. Yeah. So first, the city market on South Duke and East Princess Street. And that was formerly a dump walk. And it had a tall tower, as you can see in the photograph. But it was demolished in 1963. And York blogger June Lloyd wrote about it in an article she found in the Gazette and Daily. The top of the 80-foot high tower of the old city market accidentally fell into York Street during the demolition. The brick section crashed and caused a big cloud of brown dust. It knocked out electric lines, broke the utility and a light pole, and bent two parking meter standards. Thankfully, no one was injured, but I mean, can you imagine? You're no, just can. hanging out in New York and all of a sudden an this eight tower foot tower falls that down. Would be It'd be terrifying. terrifying. Yeah. And also very sad because this thing meant something to you and now it's it gone. Did. It did. Collateral damage. So there were many other buildings that came down. Uh, one would be the Children's Home of York. Here is the before picture, what it looked like, and then the parking lot when it was um, repaved over. This was at North Pine and East Philadelphia Street. Another one was Hannah Penn at Junior High. Look at that gorgeous building. I love the architecture of the day. The arcs of the windows. And then on the right there, it's at College Avenue and Beaver Street. It is a parking lot. Very different. This would have been a place that Dobby and I would have gone to. <laughs> it helps brewery. Again, that gorgeous building there on the left, this is the corner of East King and South Queen Street. And then on the right there, it is, you guessed it, a parking lot. Now, we are not the first to do research on this. Jim McClure and Sam Dorm have done lots of work looking at businesses and homes of prominent people who have been torn down and turned into parking spaces. Uh, if you want to go learn more, please contact Sam Dorm. She's on Facebook book, but she also does a lot of work with the Lebanon Cemetery. Over on the right there are some of the things that came down. Um, and oh, darn, I forgot my green book. But... Some of the places were a part of the Green Book, yes. which was a travel book for African Americans during time of segregation. They couldn't just go wherever they wanted to go. We take for granted that we can travel today, but right. they couldn't, you know, in the Jim Crow era. And so some of the places that were in the Green Book, a safe place for African Americans to come to New York, were turned down, which that would have been a great place to have a museum or like right. a site of conscious for today. Very important. Yeah. So the direct human cost. Yeah. So, you know, it's... There's so much that goes into this. So we're going to talk about the Faith Presbyterian Church. So this is on a 50 to 52nd North Duke Street parking lot. So it merged with First Presbyterian, now located on 225 East Market Street. Dorothy King, a retired Penn State Harrisburg professor, grew up in Faith Presbyterian and remembers when it was pulled down. Her sense of loss in the demolition of her girlhood church home remains acute. That church was such a part of who I was that I was devastated when it was torn down, she said this week. It felt like a family member had died. Many of my childhood memories are tied to, to, to fate. So you have to think about the fact that this was, you know, a church that meant so much to her, and now it's a parking lot. Yeah, another parking so, lot. Yeah. If you want to read more about this, Jim McClure and I have written a lot about it on Witnessing York, as well as the full story of the city market and other places that have been torn down. Um, he has said, Jim McClure, in a lot of his writing, that this has caused a gap to city landscape. But not only does it change the aesthetics, but also our sense of place. Right. I mean, if you have this iconic landmark that means something to you, mm -hmm. and now it's torn down, yeah. what does that do to your sense of like home and, and community and where you want to stay? Right. So it made me think about, as a kid, like what was a landscape that was important to me, or what was a building? Right. So do you have any like childhood places? Oh, absolutely. My grandfather's house right across from Newbury Elementary School in Newbury Town. Um, it's a big white house and it's over 100 years old. It was a boarding house and then it was my grandfather's home. I practically grew up there with him and now um, half the property has been divided and they're, I think they're actually putting in a parking lot. Oh my as gosh. ironic as it is and you know thankfully the building is still standing and I'm not really sure what the owners want to do with it. Someone's mm -hmm. renting the home right now and they live okay. there okay. and um, the actual home and like a little bit of the property is still intact but yeah they, they've um, raised the level of the ground. They've put in fill and I think they're making a parking oh, lot. Oh the sentimental value attached to these I things. Know. They're just buildings but they mean so much I to know. us. I know, I know. It's just an iconic part of Newburytown, so I feel like it would be weird to drive by one day and it not be not there. Not be there. 
Yeah. We also want to point out, though, that York um, preservationists and historians have done a lot of work to preserve places. Yes. Not every single place has been torn down, and not every single place has been turned into a right. parking lot. So Dami's going to walk us through some of the highlights. So iconic, the Golden Plow Tavern and the Gates House. So York County History Center has control of this, and this is on their campus. Um, in 1964, it was restored. Preservationists had found half timber construction that dated back to York's founding, all the way back to 1741. And you can see how the people lived, how they ate, how they slept, how they cooked. Famous historical figures were there, such as Lafayette and members of the Continental Congress. So, you know, thank goodness that that was saved. Mm -hmm. And then we have the rep building. So, Demp Wolf, um, Demp Wolf design, mere loss of the top three floors in 1953. The parking wasn't the issue this time. Suburban competition would come after the opening of Sears in the mid-1950s. With a lower roof, it could be rented to display billboards. So, you know, a different way to reuse this building. This building, I, I wrote an article on Wondering in New York, and they, uh, Downtown Inc., has done a lot of work to have uplighting okay. to them to, like, showcase the architecture at night. Yeah. And I challenge you, there is a gargoyle Ooh. that's on the, right in the corner there where the tree is kind of covering. But go to, in downtown New York, walk around the Rupp building. This is right at the square. Prince Street Cafe is in the bottom level now. And you can see an old gargoyle of what it looked like. Now, I will say it's an animal. Right. So I've been there... Uh, a handful of times and I don't remember that so I'll definitely look. Comment below if you know what the gargoyle is. <laughs> you wouldn't pry. <laughs> um, the Elmwood Mansion is another one that we have to talk about. So this was built in the 1830s and in the early 1900s the owners moved the house using mules and grease logs. So can, can you imagine? You? No, I can't imagine. That's amazing. A house. <laughs> I know, a whole house. Um, now the home of Inch and & Co and it's a real estate and property management business. Mm -hmm. So these three buildings showcase um, how we have a nonprofit, and then we have businesses, and this is going to lead into today. Dami and I, in a few minutes, are going to film our 12 o'clock noon yes. New, York, New York Wire Company. Mm -hmm. This is a building that has significant York County history, 150 mm -hmm. years old, and they've repurposed it again instead of just tearing it down and making a parking lot. Yes. So again, read more on Jim McClure's article in New York Daily Record, and again, we'll be airing in 37 minutes. Yeah, yeah tune um, in. One thing we want to point out, though, is that um, we are not either pro save everything or pro um, promote businesses and tear things down. Right. You know, it's really a healthy balance. So, how can we decide what we're going to keep and then also what we're going to throw away? We throw the question out for you. We'd love to hear your opinion on some buildings that you think that we should intentionally try to save, but then also making room for development and places right. to park downtown because we will need it. And if you want to watch more, go on YouTube, Hometown History. Uh, we have like a dozen videos now. I so. know. We have a great catalog for you guys to watch. You're not going to get bored. There's plenty to do, Yay. plenty to see. Go team. Yay. <laughs> see you guys at 12.